friends, Kim from Stamping in Perfection. Thank you for joining me today. I am here with some Scrappy Tales Crafts Christmas stuff, and this is the new release for August. And it's the there will be a second part of the Christmas release um, later in the year. So we're pretty excited about this one. This is a hot foil plate, and this is called the Snow Background Plate, and this one is a cover plate. This is the Festive Garland cover plate, and I love this. Sabrina always packs her cover plates full of value because there are two ornament dies in there with the bows and the toppers and a couple of poinsettias and some berries and, you know, greens that you can tuck in or use on other cards. So I always find that really exciting. I just feel like her die sets are picked with so much value. So I did not purchase any of the hot foil stuff in the August release or the June release. And I was like just so envious watching people use all of the stuff Sabrina came out with for hot foil plates. So here I am reading the instructions to my brand new hot foil plate system. I got the glimmer system because it was on like super sale and I um, actually saved $50 with this system. So um, I decided to splurge and go for it because as soon as I saw the stuff she was coming out with for Christmas, I had to have this snowfall, um, this snow background, and she's got several other things that I also purchased. So here I am reading the instructions. So this is pretty easy to use, actually. The um, blinking lights tell you everything. So you warm up the plate, then you put the hot foil plate on top and when the lights indicate it's ready you put the foil on with the shiny side down you lay the paper that you want to use on top of that and then you put the two plates on and then you pull that whole thing off the base which is actually not hot the only thing that's hot is that plate that you pull off there and that hot foil plate really is hot so you do not want to touch it and um, then you run it through your die cutting machine and I have the Spellbinders um, Platinum die cutting machine. I really liked the fold away feature so that's why I got that and I've been very happy with it. Um, so I decided to try the Spellbinder system because it was 50 bucks off. These are pricey little systems plus you have to buy the foil. This came with a whole bunch of stuff including some foil and here you can see I'm still learning how to use it so now I'm just taking it off and I'm pretty happy with it. I do have some over foiling on the sides but I'm, I will figure out you know that I need to trim that foil down a bit more um, so there isn't any extra along the edges and corners and things and that foil is also going to make a pretty card at some point but I like the way that looks I used just plain ordinary silver foil that I quite liked I like the way that looked and I thought it was pretty on the black so I ended up making another one because I had used a piece of scrap that I thought was big enough because it was big enough for the plate, but I want to use this cover plate. This is the Festive Garland cover plate, and I'm just using the cover plate itself, the Garland cover plate. And um, so I cut out another piece of black, and this is cut 5 by 7 inches because the cover plate is actually about four and three quarters by six and three quarters inches. So I cut that out, the, the garland out in white. And this is not a foil plate. This is a regular steel rule, you know, thin metal die. And um, so I cut this out w with just white because I thought the black and white would look really pretty. And I don't have any shades of green cardstock that I really love. So I, um, decided I would do this in white on this b black background with a silver foil and I'm so happy I, di I did it in this color combination because it's so pretty. So I did leave, I didn't trim down that black at all. It's going to actually give a nice little border around my cover plate and yes you'll be able to see some of that over foiling but 
I will make sure I send this to someone who is very forgiving of, you know, things like that. And um, you can barely see it. Like, it would really have to be a fussy person to, um, you know. So I have some friends who are really fussy people. I won't send that to them. I'll make, you know, I'll practice with the foiling system some more. So I'm pulling out this Cardinal Blessing stamp, and I flashed that pretty quickly in front of you there. But I'm using the Christmas Blessings sentiment, and this is actually not new release. This is one of the original releases from October 2020, and I've been coveting that Cardinal Blessings stamp set since I first saw it in December. So I bought it. I'm so excited. My mother loves Cardinals and the set is just, again, packed full of value. So I'm creating a sentiment strip and I'm going to do black and I'm going to emboss in silver. So I'm just doing that here. You can see I'm preparing it in my little mini misty and I'm leaving that strip pretty long because I'm not sure where I'm going to place it on the card exactly yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ink it up with my clear embossing powder. Now you want to make sure you don't smoosh your embossing um, ink, I mean, into that stamp set because the, the, the blessings is a different, um, different font and different font size than the Christmas part. It says Christmas blessings and you want to use a fine detail powder to get so you get distinction between the letters there. So I'm just going to use a paintbrush and brush, brush off a little excess there and I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And when I tried it out on my card I realized that um, I didn't like the black all by itself so I made a decision to go ahead and put some white cardstock because I have a whole bunch of white cardstock that you know strips that I cut down see I, it, I just didn't love that it wasn't standing out enough so I'm gonna put a piece of white behind that and I'm just trimming the white down to three quarters of an inch and the black is actually one half inch so I'm just kinda making sure it's straight Nothing ever looks straight to me, but when I test it out on the lines on the trimmer, it definitely is straight. So I'm just going to glue these two pieces together, and I like that so much better. I think the black, white, and silver combination is actually a very elegant combination. And I think it really does look like snowfall um, up through the tree branches. And I love, I really love this combination. Like, this is exactly what I had in mind when I purchase these two things. And when I hope when you purchase stamps and dies and things, you have a head full of ideas when you are um, selecting your things. Because if you can think of five ideas you do with that, by the time you get it, you'll probably have five or 10 more ideas of the different ways you can use it. And you'll just keep coming up with new ways that you can use it as you work with it. and. I really like the way this turned out and I kept thinking about all those other little extra dies in that die set and I thought you know a little red might be nice for just a pop of color so I went ahead and removed those the poinsettia die from here it's a little tiny poinsettia die and I pulled out one of my favorite reds for my card stocks and I pulled out my little mini bl blossom die cutter. If you don't have a little mini die cutter on your that sits right on your table so you can pull it out when you at the last minute decide you want to create something like this, definitely do get yourself a little mini one or put it on your Christmas wish list and um, it's worth it, definitely worth it. So I cut out three of these and I love the little detail in here and I'm sorry that I held that up pretty quickly, but it's got some really nice detail on it. So it does a little bit of scoring and the, it, it gives you some, you know, I don't have to do anything else to that. I could actually, if I wanted to, use a little Q-tip and add some darker red ink on the inside to make those lines, score lines, 
on the leaves and in the center stand out a little bit more. Um, mostly I'm just going to take my finger and just curl it up a little bit so that I'm seeing if I can get a fourth one, but I didn't space them well enough to get a fourth one there. And that would have gone in my cup of extra goodies that I pull things out of. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these on. And I really like these. Like that, that is a nice little touch, that little pop of red. And um, I'm going to pull out some new crown jewel gems. I have no idea what color those are because it wasn't labeled on the back and I can't remember what the names of the colors were that I ordered but I will link to the crown jewel gems below because there's so many colors and a little bit of um, extra bling is always nice so I'm adding these little rhinestones and the, they're sort of clear but they have kind of a lavender pink touch to them and I love these tweezers. These hooked tweezers, you can see I'm using two different pairs of tweezers. Those hooked tweezers I use just for picking up embellishments. And then the cuddle bug tweezers that you squeeze open and when you let go it holds whatever you're doing. Those are just genius. Um, so I, those are the two tweezers I have and that completes this card. Now I decided to also create all the stuff in red and still haven't mastered the overstamping. By the way, my card bases are cut at 10 by 7. I scored them at 5 inches. I put that card together exactly the same way I did the black one, except instead of the poinsettias, I decided I really wanted to use one of the ornaments. So I have this package of specialty papers that my daughter gave me for Christmas many years ago and I just didn't want to use them so of course I'm using them now why have they been sitting on my shelf like this is what she picked up for Christmas and it was a really good choice so I picked this smaller of the two ornaments and I'm gonna die cut it out of this paper this paper is very thin so I will be putting um, like a cardstock circle behind it or vellum perhaps would look really pretty um, you know, depending on what look you're going for there. And when I cut it out and removed the die, I realized, oh, it's staying together. Like all those little scrolly pieces didn't come out and I really liked, it almost just looks embossed. So I decided that I would um, just glue that onto a black circle. Now I had a one and a quarter inch circle punch and a one and three quarter circle punch, not a one and a half inch um, circle punch. I don't know where that is. Um, probably in storage in Florida. And so I have a little black um, border around this, which I'm okay with. So I glued the whole thing on and I made sure I got a little bit of glue behind every one of those pieces so that they won't fall out. Um, they, sh they do come out. They just, I was just super careful to make sure they didn't when I um, took it took the die off so I took the little topper and die cut that in white and then I just heat embossed that in silver and you saw I just used my tweezers to push that into the ink and then dip it in my embossing powder and that is going to complete that little ornament and up close you can see all the little scroll details and I actually really like the way that is and I just like the little extra pop of color on there so, um, and I'm trying to use things in my stash that I've had in my stash a while and haven't used for no other reason than, you know, it was painful to cut into. So I'm using that stuff now. So I'm just putting some foam on the top of that and some liquid adhesive on the part that's going to go on the sentiment and the foam will hold it all at the same height. So that's going to complete that card except for, of course, some some nice crown jewel gems and these are in dark green which I want to call Everglades but I'm not sure if that's what it is um, there are lots of different shades of green of these things and this is one that just came today so I'm using it today uh, in fact both sets of these crown jewel gems just came today so I'm pretty excited about that I love getting new bling for my cards, but that's going to complete my card. And you 
you can order five by seven inch um, envelopes, by the way, on Amazon. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know if I've ever seen them for sale in any stores near me. I've never looked. I'm sure the office supply store has them. Um, but I don't go in office supply stores unless I have to because I have a weakness for school supplies. I don't need school supplies anymore. So, you know, just so that I don't spend money on school supplies I no longer need, I'm avoiding the store and just ordering the envelopes on Amazon. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's going to complete that card, and that's just double-sided adhesive to attach the card top to the card base, and, and that will be a little bit of extra postage when I send it because of the size, but that's okay. I'll probably tuck it into uh, a box with gifts anyway. So there I have two more Christmas cards already, and it's only August, so I'm very excited. I'll have all the links below. Please give this video a thumbs up, friends, and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. Thank you so much for watching.